Well, the alarm clock of doom went off at GB News and it seems to be snooze resistant. Lawrence Fox is in the doghouse for it. And to avoid joining him there, Dan Wooten has decided to roll over on his back like a submissive female dog. There's a word for that, isn't there? Yes, bitch! Yes! So where should I start? Let's start with Ava Evans. Ava Evans is a political correspondent at Politics Joe. Ava must have gained her level of expertise in politics at Sussex University, where she got a bachelor's in arts. Well, Ava would like us to think that this whole story began with a clip that she posted on X of presenters Lauren Fox and Dan Wooten talking about her on the Dan Wooten Tonight Show. Her post said, Lawrence Fox just did a whole speech on GB News on why men apparently won't shag me. And poor thing, she said she was feeling sick. But Ava must have recovered very quickly because the very next day she went from show to show and relived the horrible things that were said about her again and again. And she even managed to go to the pub and drown her sorrows. So what did they say about her? Let's check out the clip she posted on X. Show me a single self-respecting man that would like to climb into bed with that woman ever, ever. He wasn't an incel. He wasn't a cucked little incel. That little woman has been fed, spoon-fed oppression day after day after day after day, starting with the lie of the gender uh, uh, wage gap. And she sat there and I'm going like, if I met you in a bar and that was like sentence three, chances of me just walking away are just huge. We need powerful, strong, amazing women who make great points for themselves. We don't need these sort of feminist 4.0. They're pathetic and embarrassing. Who'd want to shag that? Well, look, she. <laughs> Sorry, no, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to provide a, a touch of balance from her because she did actually respond to this earlier today, saying that she regretted her comments, but she didn't apologise. Uh, yes, so, <laughs> so, so there you go. No, <laughs> and she's a very beautiful woman, Lawrence. Very beautiful. Woman. In the comments section of her post, it's clear people thought that Lawrence had been incredibly misogynistic. And they were outraged by the fact that Dan just seemed to smile throughout the whole thing. But I think it's very important to highlight that in her attempt to claim victimhood, Ava decided to leave out an important part of this story. She left out the reason why Lawrence and Dan were talking about her to begin with. They were reacting to a conversation Ava had had with comedian Jeff Norcott on Politics Live. And here it is. Soon, I urge to appoint minister for men would champion issues such as reducing male suicide. If you flip those things, i.e. that it's the biggest cause of death for men under 50 is suicide, men are less likely to go to the doctors, you know, men, men are less likely to maintain friendships. If that was for women, we'd often look at, well, why is society making that happen? Whereas with men, the argument is often, why are they doing that to themselves? I think that it feeds into the culture a little bit, this minister for men argument. In my mind, I think there should be a minister for mental health which would be all-encompassing. And I think, you know, a lot of ministers kind of bandy this about to sort of, I'm sorry, but make an enemy out of women. If we looked at during COVID, men were more, literally more likely to die um, from COVID. But back. who was doing all the work during COVID? You know, a lot of the time, if you looked into people's households, it was the women who were taking on the laundry, the school uh, the school care, all but of the, that. The biggest killer of, of men under 50 is suicide. I have to say that is also because women are unsuccessful. That is a lot of, that is, feeds into that statistic. Oh, lovely, Ava. Jeff brought up a big problem that is plaguing men these days and Ava just had to make it all about women, didn't she? So after this, Jeff made a meme of the whole situation and posted it on X. He said, when you're fairly sure you're making a reasonable point, but it ain't playing out like that. After realizing that she perhaps had gone a little too far or perhaps after she received a lot of backlash, Ava went and replied to Jeff's meme by saying he had made a reasonable point and that she had been a little rash on her anti-minister for men comments, which she did regret, and that she actually was very interested in a brief for a minister on young men's mental health. Because who cares about older men's mental health anyway? But her change of heart didn't sit well with people, and she started to get a lot of backlash. To which she responded with, replies on here make me wish I hadn't bothered, to be honest. Which makes me think her apology, or should I call it her forpology, wasn't genuine to begin with. But that didn't stop Dan Wooten from quickly apologising to Ava. Dear Ava Santina, I think you're brilliant. Earlier tonight I was attempting to find your tweets to read back from my iPad and couldn't locate them. 
I apologize for what was said during the course of my show and should have done this immediately on air. This is not what our channel is about. Now, as we will soon discover, that apology was just as genuine as Ava's. Which is no surprise to me because this is Dan Wooten we're talking about. The same Dan Wooten who years ago accused Johnny Depp of domestic abuse against Amber Heard. The same Dan Wooten who never apologized for the things he said about Johnny. Even after a jury had found that Amber had lied about Johnny abusing her. Enjoying the story so far? then hit the like button. But this story is far from over. I think what Lawrence Fox said about Ava on Dan's show was definitely unprofessional, childish, and rude. He missed a great opportunity to go to town criticizing Ava for her tone deaf and incredibly insensitive response to the topic of male suicide. Instead, he attacked her personally, and in doing so, he gifted her with a get out of jail free card and a victim card, and she decided to play both to her advantage. But Ava is no victim. In my opinion, Ava has some pretty extreme views and a horrible attitude. Let me just show you a few examples of when she's made my skin crawl when she's been a panelist on Piers Morgan Uncensored. That is one of my worries, that for teenage boys now, they are so terrified of the uh, consequences of putting a foot out of line. Mm. It's hard enough being a young teenager, working out how things are, working out how to do dating and all of that, without the terror that if you touch in the wrong place at the wrong time, you may find that your whole life is destroyed. See, I and like that far terror. Too much. Well, I, I, I like that. As a I mother think that of a teenage boy, I don't like really? that terror. Really? That's the most thing I've ever heard. I awful. think that men should be frightened I think to you touch feel women differently in a way that if you they're not comfortable with. But we're talking about teenage Yeah, but we're not talking years. about... Yeah, we're not talking, talking about, about teenage yeah, It's an interesting children. thing, that you see. I would say that that attitude actually is part of the problem, too. It that is. is tox that's, to me, toxic femininity. So she wants teenagers to be terrified. Isn't she a sweetie? She's clearly no fan of men, but she's no fan of women either if they don't think the same way she does. Watch how she tries to ridicule YouTuber Pearl Davis with her smirks when Pearl begins to explain why she thinks women shouldn't be able to vote. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to remove just from yourself the right to vote? Well, um, what happened was I, I had the same view, right? Um, back when I started, I was like, why? I found out that only 5% of women wanted the right to vote. And I couldn't figure out, like, why would women not... No, it's true. It's true. At, you the look it up. at the time. At the time. Because they've been conditioned by men to think that... See what I mean? But there's more. And because I... they've been conditioned by men to think that they shouldn't have a vote. I, I mean, that's what they say. But, you know, I started reading their writings, right? And what I found out was that the reason a lot of women advocated for it was because they believed it was the beginning of the breakdown of the family. I mean, just, just to take you back to the, mm -hmm. to, to the women's writings that you've allegedly read, I mean, at allegedly. the Allegedly? Well, what do you mean, allegedly? At the allegedly? That's a bit rude, don't you think? But she's far from done. The time that you're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, women weren't really allowed to write. They weren't allowed to go to school. Yes, they were. Write, yes, they so were. That, that's actually, incorrect. The first okay, female well, yeah, property, the first about. female property owner was in the 1600s. The idea that women couldn't work and couldn't. I'm so sorry, that's, but that's, that the first be female, inherited No, the first. No, no. The first female. The first female millionaire was in the uh, late 1800s. And was that inherited? So, so it, no, it wasn't. It was self-made. She was. No, yes, it was. Self-made. Yes, it was. She never inherited Yes, she did not inherit it. And what law permitted that? Watch how Ava managed to squeeze a wow out of. Is. Go, go apply to be on the oil rigs, go do, go be a plumber, go be electrician, go be on the front lines of the military, and then we should have equal rights. But until feminists are willing to do that, I don't believe we should have the freedom without the responsibility. Okay, well, I don't think that I'm physically built for that. You might be, but I'm absolutely that, not. You, no, but you, wow. you said you're wow. 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 You said And finally, watch how Ava responds to Pearl's belief that divorce should be banned. The people that believe in divorce, go be in long-term relationships. Leave marriage for the people that actually believe in, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health till death do us part. But doesn't the sanctity of marriage also rely on the woman being a virgin? So you wouldn't be able to get married. I, what do you what do you mean? Well, you've spoken quite openly There's... about how you're not a virgin. And so if you want to preserve that sanctity of marriage, I then, think, you know, you know I, and I, would, I just think that and... you're upholding standards that you don't I, actually I, live I, by. As you can see, instead of debating the concepts, Ava decided to get personal. And in my opinion, that was really inappropriate, just as inappropriate as Lawrence was with her. But the difference between them is that she got off scot-free for this, but I can't say the same about Lawrence. So back to the story. So first thing in the morning after the Dan Wooten show episode in question, 
a time probably best described as brown trousers time for Dan. Well, you can't tell by the way I awkward walk. I'm gonna shit my pants. There's no time to talk. In an effort to save his own ass, Dan decided to apologize once again, but this time throwing Lawrence under the bus. He said, I want to reiterate my regret over last night's exchange with Lawrence on GB News. Having looked at the footage, I can see how inappropriate my reaction to his totally unacceptable remarks appears to be and want to be clear that I was in no way amused by the comments. I reacted as I did out of shock and surprise in an off-guard moment while working out how to respond as he continued to speak by searching for tweets Ava Santina had sent earlier in the day while having them read out in my ear at the same time. However, I should have intervened immediately to challenge offensive and misogynistic remarks. I apologize unreservedly for what was a very unfortunate lapse in judgment on my part under the intense pressure of a bizarre exchange. I know I should have done better. I'm devastated that I let down the team and our supportive GBN family. We seek to tackle the issue and not the person, which I intend to stress again on air tonight. Shortly afterwards, Lawrence broke his silence with a very long tweet. He said, Morning, morning. First of all, don't take a pop at Dan Wooten for something I said. That's not fair. Secondly, I stand by every word of what I said. If a woman wants to go on television and belittle male suicide, she is totally within her rights to do so and not apologize. Just as I am totally within my rights to say that I wouldn't want to shag a hyper-offended fourth-wave feminist and not apologize. Just as people are totally within their rights to be offended by my stating I would run a mile in the opposite direction from a woman like her should our paths cross in a bar. It's called free speech. I realize that the new work world is low on laughter and high on offense, but it's still worth trying to find the lighter moments in this joyless new cancel culture which has been created for us. This lady has said on air that she wants men to be frightened and terrified. Tumbleweed from the media at her premeditation and malevolence, because it's not a man saying it, which rather proves my point. You are totally entitled to find my mockery of the insane hypocrisy in this world not to your taste, but that's me, and I will continue to be me. As a wise man once said, be yourself, everyone else is taken. So you keep trying to cancel away in your state of permanent offense. I've been cancelled already and may well be again, but I don't care one bit, and I will keep defending my right to have an opinion on issues which concern me. Without free speech and the presumption of innocence, we are not free. We aren't quite communist Eastern Europe yet. We may be very close, but not quite there. It's still worth fighting for. So if you're expecting a groveling apology, I suggest you don't hold your breath. I won't ever apologize to the mob. Have a lovely day. In this self-censoring world, speak your mind. Live strong and free. I must admit that I agree with everything he just said. It doesn't matter whether people agree with him or not, or if they're offended by him or not. He shouldn't have to apologize, just like Ava didn't have to apologize to Pearl. And no one should be suspended just because they offended someone with their views. We can all decide for ourselves who we want to listen to and who we don't want to listen to, who we agree with and who we don't. We are adults and we have the ability to think for ourselves and make our own decisions. But the drama is not over yet. You know how at first Lawrence defended Dan with a whole don't take a pop at Dan for the things I said? Well, something made him change his approach. Perhaps it was the knife he found in his back with Dan's fingerprints all over it. Or perhaps it was the fact that GB News suspended him. Maybe it was a bit of both. But the fact is that Lawrence decided to take Dan down with him. In a tweet where he said honesty is the best policy, he shared an exchange he had, I would assume, with Dan shortly after the remarks he had made on Dan's show. 
Despite what Dan said in his apology, this exchange seems to indicate that Dan found what Lawrence said very amusing at the time. And then Lawrence shared another post saying that contributors do a pre-interview before going on shows so they knew exactly what he was going to say and he shared some receipts. So ultimately rolling over on his back like a bitch did not save Dan from being suspended from GB News as well. I guess Karma finally caught up with him after what he did to Johnny Depp. But if I'm to be honest, I really don't think that either of them should have been suspended. Because it isn't a crime to be offensive. And Ava is proof of that because she gets away with being offensive all the time. I think this story highlights the fact that rules don't apply equally to everyone in today's world. But the scariest thing to me about this whole story was how many people went on Twitter to demand that both Lawrence and Dan be fired or suspended and also calling for Ofcom to get involved. Are their minds so fragile that they cannot bear a little bit of offence or the sound of a different opinion? I just cannot understand how some people are all for censorship. What do you guys think about this story? Remember to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already and I'll catch you in the comment section below. Thanks for watching my friends and until next time.